What's up everybody, Navjack27 here. I wanted to start out the new year with a fresh start in my computing environment, so I upgraded to Windows 10 Pro. In this video, I'll talk about my experiences and tweaks I found useful if you are also planning on taking the plunge or have done so already. Happy New Year, YouTube. Let's start off with some backstory. I've been on Windows 7 for a while with this computer I built. I've grown comfortable with the quirks and changes I've, I've applied almost to a fault. I started working on collecting data for a future video on frame timing in games when it came to the realization that my install had become pretty much unstable for this test and unreliable. I was faced with a decision. Reinstall Windows 7 Ultimate and possibly miss out on future testing of DirectX 12, or just bite the bullet and get started with Windows 10 now. Let's start off with taking a look at the different editions of Windows 10 that are available right now. So right now we have Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro, and then we got the Enterprise and all these other versions over here. Um, right now, I think that Windows 10 Home is probably the most popular one that most people who already have Windows 10 are running or who have upgraded from Windows 7 probably are using. I have upgraded to Windows 10 Pro because of a couple key features that let me disable a lot of the annoyances people say Windows 10 has. As you can see, Windows 10 Home has all these features and it's pretty much in parity with Windows 10 Pro up to this point right here. And then we get to all of these um, more business um, type features. And the first one I wanna talk about is the group policy management. And what that allows you to do, here it is right here, is set um, administrative settings um, that are like workstation wide to your, um, your computer and possibly to, to your network if you're a business and you have other computers um, you know, connected to your same work group and all that kind of business. And um, I've done things like disable the automatic updates, um, disable the automatic downloads, disable the whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of the telemetry and uh, people call it spying that Windows 10 has through these features. And I'm not sure if any Windows updates will flip some of these switches, but I'll check it every once in a while to make sure nothing gets reverted. Look up the group policy editor, and there's a lot of nifty things if you take the time to look at everything in here. The next thing I did was look up how to uninstall built-in apps in Windows 10. And this uh, howtogeek.com article sums it up pretty well. You, first you load up PowerShell, open it as an administrator, and you have all of these you, you know, native Windows 10 modern apps. And um, I'm not gonna use any of them, but the, the, the main one that you really wanna get rid of are the um, Xbox packages. So you would take this right here, get Xbox. You would, you would get that and you would remove it. You could go one step further and this winareo.com blog post shows how you could remove all apps for all user accounts. And this is the one that I've used. You would just paste it into there, hit enter, let it run and restart your computer. And then you won't have the Xbox live gaming center you won't have the the windows 10 dvr functionality and from the testing that i've done with the frame timings in counter strike you have an increased minimum average and maximum frame rate from doing this so i recommend everybody who is never going to touch a modern app use this function right here the next thing I recommend everyone check out for Windows 10 is SpyBot's anti-beacon software. And pretty much you just download that, you run it, and it will 
block a whole bunch of the phoning home IP addresses to Microsoft if you're worried about those kind of things. And to continue with performance, moving to Windows 10 has been pretty much a joy when it comes to how responsive and high performing it lets my hardware get with the operating system itself. Because you can see my, th uh, my 3D Mark uh, Firestrike score right here. 12K with a 15K, um, almost 16. I'm probably going to get to 16 when I mess around with a little bit more overclock on my GPU. This is, this is beautiful. This is perfect right here. And the only thing that I've modified on uh, my graphics card will be something that's going to be coming up in the next video. That's my fire strike, but let's take a look at some future data um, using this uh, program called Bench Studio GPU 2015 made by WebWalker. This uh, program allows you to import in uh, Fraps benchmark data, which you know includes frame timing, and it takes that frame timing and it turns it into usable data with graphs and everything. And right now I'm testing Counter-Strike Global Offensive and different AMD driver settings, plus overclocks, plus BIOS modifications to my graphics card. As you can see, my frame rates are high with Windows 10. The comparable frame rate, which basically takes the deviation of your stuttering, which is this chart right here. This is your frame times. You can see the high peaks are on there. And if, I, if I'm if i to get rid of, if I get rid of these right here and then refresh this, this right here is, is my best result so far, which is an overclock on my GPU of 1125 megahertz on the core, 1625 on the memory with a BIOS modification to the memory timings. And that's gonna be an interesting video when you guys uh, see it in a couple days. As you can see, everything is nice and tight. It's spiking up a little bit, but everything is under 12 milliseconds for the frame time, which results in a very smooth game and very high frame rates. Would I recommend that the average user upgrade to Windows 10 right now? Possibly. I recommend that if you can, you get Windows 10 Pro, so you could have more control over your operating system because it's your computer, you own it, and you should be the one in charge of all of the policy that goes on inside of your computer.